What kind of nonsense was that? Guitar player playing bass. LG, what was that? Uh, nonsense. LG's here, everybody. <laughs> Say hi, LG. Hi, LG. Oh, here's a guy sitting with the bass for one of the one of the world's greatest bass players, without question. Uh, running it through a bunch of guitar pedals and a guitar amp. What an idiot! Can you believe this guy? The nerve of this guy, the LG. The nerve. But you want to know why? Why you want to know why I can do that? Because uh, I am super fan. Right. Yeah, and uh, I have fanboyed out on Mr. Watt for, um, we're looking at, yeah, I have 35 years of fanboying Watt. And uh, the fact that we make this bass still uh, blows me away. And uh, I had a big reminder uh, a couple of nights ago of how blown away I am by the fact that we do the Watt Plower. And uh, if there it is over there, yeah, this show is. It off, I'm to show it off. This is the screen. coolest thing I know. It's on the amp behind that. It's not. Check it out, everybody. This is a Mike Watt bobblehead, and um, from I don't know why Agro I'm Agronautics. Agronautics. Yes, they're and, limited uh, to 500. They're, this one should be numbered. Yes, this is numbered. It's uh, number 412 of 500, I believe that says. Oh, so. So get your Four, no, it could be 452. Whoever this is writes like nail art. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there's the little stamp there on the back. But uh, yes, and uh, I had no idea that this existed, and um, I had quite the chuckle when uh, when Penny brought it up to me. Uh, well, I just we were on a little road trip, and we got home, and that was sitting on the driveway waiting for us. And, yep. Uh, Penny was going to save it for Christmas, but decided that she couldn't do that because it was just too cool. And she's right. I it actually is. forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, and, what uh, is this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, anyways, here's the box. And uh, I think this is cool. The picture on the side of the box is him with one of the two yellow uh, prototype watt plowers uh, that we tested the location of the pickups for the watt plower Mark II on. And then uh, another picture on the other side of the green one, which I hold in my hands here. And uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Watt Bobblehead. Who'd have thought? I guess the, there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on out there in the world, isn't there, LG? All kinds. I love the fact that the three-eyed fish sticker is on. Yeah. The, it, that just makes it happen. It and does. makes it so much fun. Right. Um, yes. So I don't know what I was doing there, uh, as you guys are probably all too painfully aware. But um, the Watt Plower has got this very, uh, very original triple P pickup design. And um, in position one on the three way switch, you are using the pickup, the blade that is closest to uh, the hip shot bridge, then the hip shot bridge is the one that they make with the very with the narrowest string spacing available so there really is no taper uh, when you go from the nut to the bridge i mean there is but it's very slight so the string spacing is very tight um, and in position two it switches from being the blade closest to the bridge to being the blade closest to the neck however this blade stays stationary um, so you're not getting a, a difference in tone on on your um, D and G strings, but when you flip the switch, however, when you hit that open E, or any E really, the, the character of the low string changes, uh, which is cool because, you know, Mike does a lot of big open string riffs, and uh, sometimes it's fun to have that... Uh, have that sort that brighter tone, you know, especially when you're smacking it, right? And then having the the more traditional uh, setup, uh, and then interestingly, this is a Rio Grande Pitbull humbucker, and it is uh, a very very high output for guitar on the bass. I, more or less, I mean, it's it's sort of a higher output pickup, but the way uh, the frequencies resonate with it is it gives it this sort of naturally muted tone. And one of the things that I see Mike doing with it, like um, he did it a lot on the MSSV stuff this year, but he does it a lot when he's playing with the second men and stuff too. When the when the band gets quiet and Mike is comping single note 
stuff uh, in the upper registers of the neck, he goes to this pit bull humbucker and and does his little little riffs and stuff. And then he can just do the thing that that we associate with him the most. Uh, the the pistol so pickup cool. to my ear is just so round. Yeah, it's so it's so round, and and uh, it's yeah, and it, it it's just it's an interesting sound. And what makes it fun is that the bass is wide open. You can accomplish these things electronically very easily. I mean, you you could you could accomplish the 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 change that you get going to that neck pickup with like a with a compressor of sorts or or other you know an EQ, EQ it a capacitor like in our Sentinel bass gets it really really close, uh, but just being able to do all that with the with the signal wide open, I don't, there's something that's just really fun about it, and um, you know, I don't talk about basses enough on here, and I know I talked about this one before, but I'm here to talk about it again because I think it's cool. Uh, we just recently had the lovely Via Mardo in the building. What about a month ago? Yep. We had her sitting in these chairs, yeah, and she plays the uh, root beer sparkle version of this. Um, Mike is one of those like forward moving guys too, you know, like the latest incarnation of what we're doing for him is what he wants to play and it's the thing he likes the most and he's been out playing that root beer a lot, you right. know, I mean that's been his jam, uh, which is super cool, but uh, this satin, um, satin emerald green color that we use, this sort of Heineken green thing, um, was his first idea for the color on this bass. And it looks so cool in this configuration, and it's been so popular that we're still offering it, and we're still, uh, we sell almost as many of these as we do the root beer version. It's right. still going. And then we are still making the single pickup version of the Watt Plower, the yellow one, for now. Um, and, and that is still going, too. That was like the OG, the original one that we matched right. to his watch and such. Um, we are still doing like three versions of that. And of course, we are still making bases. Um, we have been selling bases. Mm -hmm. And I understand that there are some things out there that are that are hard to find. I keep getting asked, are you guys still making the Dub King? I'm like, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I can't find one anywhere. I'm on reverb. I'm, uh, I'm like, ah. So it's like, it's good and it's bad. <laughs> right. right? I mean, right. it's good that they're in demand. I mean, that's a great thing for us. You know, uh, I, I'm sorry that we're not making some of these things fast enough for y'all. Uh, but yes, indeed. Uh, and of course, our emphasis this year has been on our, our the 25th anniversary of the decision base, uh, which has been beautiful and has been getting a lot of reviews and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I just got this Mike Watt bobblehead, and here we are, folks. Here we are. <laughs> so the I mind have. Of Ken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I ain't gonna lie to you. It's kind of fun, like, being in having my job and then working with people who you know you've admired your whole life like right. if you would have told I, I've said it a million times but if you would have told 16 year old Ken that uh, this this Watt thing was going to happen I don't know what 16 year old me would how I would have reacted to that um, I remember my, my best friend Jason Bose and I uh, driving around in his Chevy Celebrity listening to the cassette of the Minutemen's My First Bells over and uh, yeah, and uh, hence the Joe McCarthy's ghost video I put on my Instagram this morning. I shot a funny video of this bass with the bobblehead, and I had to go with it. Lyrically, the song doesn't fit with what I'm talking about, you know what I mean? Right, and right, I was right. like, and I wanted to put, you know, like maybe one of Mike's solo things, you know, like Big Train or, or you know, even his absolutely killer version of my favorite song of all time, Forever One Reporter's Opinion. Mm -hmm. But, um, that Joe McCarthy's ghost, ghost bass line, that was, that was the thing when I was like 15 and I heard that for the first time, I was like, that's a bass? How is that a bass? In like, fact. Bah! And I know a lot of people had that experience in 1978 mm -hmm. when the first EP came out. However, in 1978, I was eight. Uh, Jason <laughs> Bose did say, give me some Joe McCarthy. Yeah, I, I still don't know how to play that, Bose. You come here and give us some Joe McCarthy's ghost. He's okay. working. Okay, he's, bud. You know. Oh, he's working. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I can tell. 
<laughs> awesome. Yeah. No, I, you know what? The only person I've ever seen play that song close to right was uh, our good buddy uh, Jeff West from the Detroit band uh, Cold as Life. And when we were kids, he was in this band called Slow Death. And I, I have a very vivid, vivid memory of us sitting on Penniman Avenue in downtown uh, Plymouth and him me asking him about Joe McCarthy's ghost and him playing it for me and me being amazed at the trill. Like this guy who was like 17, 18 years old was just crushing that song. And I know that uh, Je Jeff is still around the Detroit area. I don't know if he would uh, ever pick up on this thing going on, but uh, if anybody knows him, tell him I said hi. I know he's one of Navarro's buddies, of course. And that was just a lot of blathering on about my youth. But, and the same thing with, uh, and if you had told 19-year-old me or 20-year-old me that we would be hanging around, I guess 21 probably by the time Tim Machine came out, I, I, I just lost my mind yeah. with that too. And, uh, and now here we get to hang out with Reeves. There's that beautiful dirt bike royale over there in gray that's mine it was uh, out of the demo room here for a while we borrowed the pickups for somebody and uh, i finally got me a new pair of pickups for it so she's back and uh saw reeves last week as a matter of fact lg we saw him in troy uh hanging out at college city guitars with our friend peter and um that's a great store great it's store a fun store. store we we but were it's great yeah we were taking a ride to the east coast and we stopped by and uh, got to hang out with reeves and peter for for a dinner and then we hung around the store the next day for a little while and played a bunch of cool guitars and, and there were a bunch of cool guitars to be played. Yeah, he's got new there? stuff, old stuff, quirky stuff, more pedals than you can shake a stick at. You know what he has? What? He has a natural Carina Volcano. The he bound, does. The bound non-ridgetop yeah, version. The last iteration of the Volcano before, before the, you know what happened, the, he who shall not be mentioned. Mm -hmm. They who shall not be mentioned. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool. I wish I had saved one of those. It's so, you know what's really funny is when you walk into a music store and you see something that we used to make and I actually think about buying it. That's dumb. Isn't that dumb? <laughs> but, it, but it's kind of cool too. I'm like, yeah. God, I wish I had that. You know what I mean? That's, that's silly. That's silly. I don't know why I went there. <sighs> LG, does anybody have any questions for me? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. People love their Watt flowers. They love them. I'm so glad that people tuned in. That, that little thing I came up with, I don't even remember how to play it anymore. Okay. <laughs> um, Just goofing off. That's fun. I love mine too. Mine's over there. Relatedly. Relatedly. But not really relatedly. But Jim, who knows, said he wanted, he wanted to let us know how well represented Reverend was at the woodshed last weekend. He's never seen so many Gristle Masters and Gristle 90s in one place. Everyone was impressed by them. That's awesome. That is so cool. Yeah, we, we Greg, I mean, Greg's obviously a fantastic ambassador. brand ambassador, man. Yeah. He, is, he is the man. And, uh, and those guitars are killer. That Gristle 90 is so much fun. There's mine. Uh, <laughs> it's such a cool guitar, but then the, we got those cool pictures of Tosin jamming on it. Right. And then he sent me a little, he commented a little message on my, like, one of my social media pages, how much he liked it and shit, which is, what a cool dude. What a nice guy. I mean, you know, that's like, I don't know. That's the way this business should be. Right. Like, we're all friends we're here. We're all friends here. We're all we're doing We're all the friends same here. Thing. We're all in this cool little space. And, right. And uh, I just thought that was really, really cool. Right. And it's supposed to be creative and interesting and, and it, uh, you know. And it is. Right. Yes. Uh, Rick Torres would like to know what gauge strings are on it. These are 45 through 100 Diodario XL short scale bass strings, the preference of Mr. Mike. Sometimes we have a difficult time getting those strings from Diodario and we set these up in house with SIT 45 through 105s, which is what is on our basis standard. Uh, you can always tell which one they have on them. If they have the SITs on them, all of the strings have brass ball ends. And if they have the Diodarios, of course, you have the rainbow of flavors when it comes to the ball ends. You'd have to look in the back, right? In the ferrules? Is you it me on this one? It... Yes. These are SITs. Okay. Yes, this hip shot bridge, I do that all the time. 
This hip shot bridge is really cool because you can top load the strings through the back of the bridge or you can come up through the bottom and there are holes drilled in this custom brass plate that we fitted under the bridge to put a little more mass uh, behind the strings and give it a little bit more oomph. Um, and we recommend, and I know most people recommend, if you're going to put flats on these things, use the top loader option so that you don't put the big kink in the flat wounds. But, to be honest, you can string through with flats, no problem, can't you, Brad? If Brad's watching, Brad will tell you. And, uh, of course, half rounds, you can go either way. That's the beauty of those. Um, I love flats on bases, but we do not ship the bases with flats because they're expensive. <laughs> they are. So and, and they're niche. I mean, people either love them or hate them. Right. So if you start, you know, by setting it up with the rounds and, and people are happy with it. And then most, we figure, and even with bass players more, more than guitar players, the first thing that a bass player does is put their preferred strings on the bass because it's the thing that they're used to. And because the strings are bigger, I think you just, it's easier for bass players to get really accustomed to, to something. You know what I mean? Um, like Mike with the Diodarios, and then that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with any of the other killer uh, bass strings that are out there. We have some labellas around here for Michelle and Deggio Cello, and those are sweet ass strings. Yeah. But uh, you know, uh, it is what it is. I well, don't even know where I was the, going and, with that. And LB. the bass strings are just a different animal. Like I know bass players who will take strings off of one bass and put them on another bass, and they're old. Oh yeah. And oh yeah. Used oh, that's and the thing. broken in, and that's what they like. That's well, some the of them. That you know is, what I mean? That is. Mm -hmm. that's Whereas the guitar players want the newest string they can possibly get. Indeed. The, these are true statements. You can tell she's been hanging around us too long. <laughs> um, I'm just going to keep doing that. I yeah. just love that major third on this bass anywhere. Frank Harlan uh, wants to know the name of the bass because he just... Joined a little Frank, bit. this is a Watt Plower Mark II Reverend Guitars Mike Watt signature bass. And, you and can tell it's like Mike know. Watt bass because yeah. there's a little star where San Pedro is located. And he would like to know if it's a short scale. What scale length is it? It is. It is a 30 incher, 30 inch bass. Uh, Johnny Cola said also. Last weekend, he went to the Rockaway Beach Surf Music Festival in Queens. Woohoo! And four of the nine bands had reverence out in the front. So there's yes! something going on there. <sighs> Kicking ass and taking names, aren't we, LG? Yeah. 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 Kicking ass and taking names. Right. That is awesome. Right. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks. Pictures or it didn't happen. When you guys see your reverence, oh, he posts I pictures know all the he time. does. I'm just <laughs> preaching to the choir when it comes to Johnny and Don for sure. But uh, you know, we love to see him when you guys see him out there because you know, um, we can't be everywhere. We can't be everywhere, and the artists don't always share them with us. Sometimes I'm, sh I find like somebody, did you know so and so was playing? What? No, I had no idea. That's rad. That happens to us every once in a while. So, like the guy from Oh Now, I'm not even gonna. Black. Oh, now I'm not even gonna? That's a sweet band. I'm sorry. <laughs> Black. I'm, fact, I'm gonna change the name of one of my bands to Oh, now I don't think I'm gonna. <laughs> no, what are they called? They're the British band and they're, they're Black something or something Black. Black Midi? Yeah. Yeah, oh, they're badass. Yeah, and yeah, that guy that plays a cool, Descent and yeah. we had no idea until yeah. people were like, no, that's bad. Did you know, it's really funny. We're, we're sending them some backup well, now. instruments now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, we're like, we're talking, Tim's like dealing with them right now. Yeah, cool. It's funny you would mention that. Yeah, that which is why that name was on the tip of my tongue, yeah, too, by the, the way. They're so cool. I'm not that good. <laughs> I'd like to be. Woohoo! Uh, Frank Van Heck says he thought the gristle 90 is a big guitar but seeing it next to the dirt bike it looks as if the dirt bike is just as big are his eyes this is this oh. is a thing uh, this i've <laughs> this has been a thing since we launched these gristle master guitars uh greg uh, greg talks about how they're bigger because he's a bigger stature and all this kind of stuff the increase in size on the gristle master and the gristle 90 is really no bigger than the binding on the body. Uh, we, are, we are literally talking about a 3% difference. If you put like our East Sider and a Gristle 90 next to each other, it's hard to see. When you put them on top of each other, you can maybe see it a little bit. It's very, very subtle, but it makes Greg comfortable. 
but the guitar still fits in our standard guitar case, no problem. Right. I mean, it's it's it, so it's not. It's, it's not that big of a difference. It, it's a little big for a telly, but it's not big as guitars go. No, not in any way. You know what I mean? And it's nowhere the, near as big as like the the Airwave, which is roughly the the lower bout of the Airwave is the size of the Club King, you know. And when you look at when you look at the Gristle ninety, even compared to the Airwave, you you can tell that the Airwave is a bigger semi hollow, and the Gristle ninety is just just a slightly bigger uh, T style guitar, indeed. And yes, yeah, so and then the offset waist of the dirt bike, you know, sort of compensates for that, even making it, uh, you know, uh, closer to to T sized at least in length, which is why that's probably playing with your vision here on the camera. It's a very interesting point, and I like that. Mm -hmm. Indeed, well, and your brain is filling in all those. Oh, my brain! All those gaps. My there, brain isn't. You know. I'll tell you that. All right. I know. I know, I worked two days this week and I'm all like, ready for the long weekend. Are you guys ready for the long weekend? I'm ready for the long weekend. I'm off. I'm not playing any gigs. Wow. I know. I'm going to hang out. I'm going to hang out. In our newly empty home? In our newly empty home. The kids are <laughs> off at college. Well, I'd say newly empty home, but there's Lenny Lou Guitar Cat That's that true. needs to be dealt with. And uh, I picked up a new fun piece of vintage equipment that Lenny Lou Guitar Cat and I will be taking photographs with on Sunday morning. You can check that out on Instagram if you like. Lenny Lou Guitar Cat. Mm -hmm. She's killer. Mm -hmm. She's a killer. <laughs> She's not at all. <laughs> like a bug sometimes, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, if she's not scared of it. <laughs> These are true statements. They are. We're just saying, it's a free-for-all Friday here, it I is. think, is what's happening. Which is totally fine. I'm totally good with that. We're having a birthday lunch for one of our employees after. Right. I'm kind of looking forward to that too. That'll be a good time. Party. Yeah. We're having chili dogs and euros, I hear. Chili dogs and euros. Wow, that's fun. Seems like cool. a media conversation. Yes, yes. Uh, so, okay, one more time, uh, just because uh, somebody answered some questions. So I'm going to give the whole rundown of this thing, all right? I talked about the pickups for a while, but this is a Carina body, three piece Carina neck with a rosewood fingerboard. Uh, we do the three piece neck for strength and stability long-wise. And then we like to do a tilt back headstock uh, because we don't like string trees on bases are too weird. Um, and we don't want to have this volute here. So by doing the three-piece Karina neck, you get the strength of the laminate, right? So we don't need to put a volute on. And then uh, these are the very nice uh, hip shot ultralight tuners, uh, Reverend's Bonite uh, synthetic bone nut, um, and then there are lumen lay inlays on the top of the fretboard. Um, notice the threes and the twos there, so that they glow bright for Mr. Watt on dark stages. Oh, they can't see that. Well, trust me, they're there. You want to go turn out the light for a second? I bet they see. Do you really want me to? I yeah, will. Do it. It'll be funny. Let's right. see if it actually right. shows up. All right. Here we go. All right. You ready? Right. I'm ready. One, two, three. I see nothing. You see nothing. Oh, I see them. Do you? They're glowing. They're glowing bright. Yeah, no, they're glowing bright. Okay. All right. That was not good TV. That was not. Well, you know what? You screen. never know. It was fun. <laughs> I thought it was fun. Um, <laughs> uh, note: Watt Plower is inlaid uh, up here on old 17, and then the three-way switch does these two blades, these two blades, and then the Rio Grande Pitbull humbucker. This is Reverend's triple blade hip shot bridge as well, custom brass plate. Custom input jack plate, which is very, very thick. Um, and then, of course, the numbered uh, numbered knobs with the pointers on them. Carina body. They all, even with that much electronics, this base weighs seven pounds, six ounces, probably. Maybe not even that. Uh, the one with the single pickup version without the humbucker routinely comes in under seven pounds. And the way it's designed with this brass plate, adding some mass and some weight back here on the bridge, um, you don't have neck dive issues with this because most of the weight is in the body. I'm holding it by the neck pin and it's going up. So there you have it. Um, Watt Power Mark II. The, a couple people on YouTube said they could see it. And I don't know if it played differently on YouTube or Facebook, but... You know, so your experiment was a good one. Cool. There you go. Yeah. Uh, 
Doink Brady. Doink Brady. Says, Does Reverend make guitar straps? I just chucked one in the garbage that damaged my Reeves signature model. It had metal buttons on it. Yikes. Yeah. We do. We make two different guitar straps. Where are they, LG? I don't know. They're sold or something. I usually have a couple of them right here. I know. Uh, we make a tr triple extra long nylon strap that has the logo printed on it uh, that even a giant six foot six gargantuan like myself uh, can wear the guitar down by the knee, my knees if I like. And then we make a more traditional um, leather strap, uh, which adjusts out pretty far, but not as long as the nylon one does. Uh, actual measurements are on the website. And we make the leather strap in really cool, uh, we make it in purple, because we've been doing, and just selling a ton of purple guitars lately. Yeah. So we made a purple strap because it's cool, and orange, and uh, sort of a cream color with a black logo, and then black with the white logo, but those are very nice leather straps that uh, Joe Naylor designed with our good friend Jen Tabor, um, when she was working for Gator, she is, of course, she owns soldier straps and she makes beautiful stuff in her own right. Um, but, uh, and those straps are very, very nice high end. Uh, they do have a metal buckle on the back where, where the slider is just because it's nice. It's the nice way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then a really nice padded leather thing with the brand on it and then um, nice leather end. So mm -hmm. all of that stuff is available at reverendguitars.com slash store yeah. or just go to Reverend and click on store. Store. Probably the easiest thing to do. I think so. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't think that's exactly the address, but okay. Pretty sure it is though. I think it's store. Anyway, whatever. Anyways, it's out there. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of straps and they're cool. Yes. And <laughs> Jay Hathaway says, much like my pants, the older I get, the higher I pull my strap. Yep, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, That's yeah, thing, Jay. bud. Uh -huh. That's thing. It's nice to have that elbow. Yeah, I agree. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I know. My vibrato is better if I wear the guitar a little higher. Right. Indeed. All right, everybody. Well, hey, I think that's it for this week. I appreciate you. I, uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, <laughs> Penny knows what's coming. She's like, oh. Do I? God, he plays this about. He plays the song so much. Oh, that's all. But uh, I can't help it. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll be here next week. Um, we'll definitely be here next week. I'm not sure about the week after, but uh, next week we'll pop in uh, upcoming Reverend events. I don't think we're doing a guitar show until Philly right. in November, but um, there's things happening. Um, we just got the test pressing of the Jane Navarro and the Traders record. Mm -hmm. So I'll be announcing a release date for our new Thing, which is super cool, but I think we're waiting for vinyl. Uh, the Polka Floyd show, Rolling Six Deep, will be playing at the Village Idiot Mommy one week from today. Right. That is Friday the 9th. Uh, come check out our new vocalist. She is awesome. And uh, and then, yeah, that's, that's it. So everybody, have a fantastic, long, three-day Labor Day weekend. I'm going to get to this bridge, uh, this bridge version of the P. You ready? Yeah, you I'm ready. ready. Could do this all day and, often and have is. right yeah. sometimes I play it good sometimes I play it bad Thank you.